Welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's your girl here, Rain, with another installment to my wedding vlog series. You know I had to come back with something fabulous, extra, extra fabulous, and that is what this chandelier is. I recreated it, and if you wanna see what I did to make it, stay tuned. Okay, let's talk supplies. And for this project, you absolutely need a lot of them, but don't be alarmed, it's gonna come out great. Now you see this little tray here. I will talk about that in just a minute, but I have another tutorial for that. Uh, pretty much all of my supplies came from Hobby Lobby, Dollar Tree, whatever. These are those famous Dollar Tree candle holders that you can get. 99 cent store also has them. Hobby Lobby even has them, but they sell them for $1.99. However, they do go on sale every other week, so you can still get them at Hobby Lobby for a dollar. Now make sure you check them out because whenever you're going to build upward with these, you want to make sure that the lip at the top where the candle is inserted is, is flat because when you're building, you don't want that to slip and slide and be crooked. This is a 99 foot roll of crystals that I get faithfully from eBay. It's about $7 and you need about one full roll and maybe another quarter of one. Um, for this particular project. These aren't the um, iridescent ones. Those are the clear ones. Now I could have made a base like this, but I chose not to because this with the 40% off at Hobby Lobby from the $7.99 ended up costing me about four bucks. And it would have actually cost me about the same to make it. So it was just easier just to buy it. When you pick it, be careful that you look at it because they're using those little bling st uh, stickers to, um, line it up on the side and so sometimes that does come off or some of those squares are missing so just make sure you check it out before you buy or go over to the craft section and buy the stickers so that you can replace them the candle holder is going to be adhered to that base and that's going to be my structure for this entire thing i never want things to just sort of sit on top of a candle especially when it's heavy at the top this all surface metallic spray paint is the bomb. I got it at Home Depot. It's about six bucks. Again, in the other tutorial, I used it for the wooden base there, and I also use it for the lampshade. You'll see a little bit later. Epoxy is my go-to glue whenever I am building something major like this. One, because it sticks for life, and it dries fairly quickly. So that's one of the things I love about that particular glue. This bling I get asked about every time I post something with it. I got mine at a flea market, but I did see the other day that Hobby Lobby also carries it just in a much smaller roll and you can find it on eBay. Now this is where I spent the majority of the money. You're probably gonna think I'm crazy, but I spent $19 on these lampshades from Home Depot. Now they also have tea light holders that look like this. You can find these a lot of different places. I was just ready to build it and so anxious to see it. I went ahead and splurged and you see that the bottom of that is fairly open. Now in the original design, um, they had flowers uh, that were built up around the little circular bases that they use. So this enables me to still wire flowers in there if I choose to do that. But if I don't, and when I take those flowers out, I will still have a beautiful lamp, uh, not lampshade, chandelier. So that ended up working out for me. Now, originally, I brought these planters from Home Depot. They were very cheap, like two bucks, a dollar for the smallest one and two bucks for the big one. I was originally going to use the tall one at the top and the wider one at the bottom to kind of create sort of a dramatic lampshade effect, but it wasn't wide enough in the circumference, so that really didn't work out for me. But I showed you this here because you can still use it as an option if you want to make a smaller one. I just needed something with more of a 16 inch diameter, so that worked out better for me. 
All right. But again, this is an option. And there's a circular mirror that's inside that wooden uh, that wooden. Uh, uh, good Lord, I'm losing my train of thought. There's a circular mirror in there that you can see I'm tongue tied that I was going to use to put on top of that planter. But I changed my mind and decided not to use that. But I was going to use that to create another base so that I was not building from inside that bottom planter uh, upward. You want a sturdy base and there is a little bit of a lip inside that planter. So I needed something to kind of flatten that out. And there's also a 12 by 12 mirror in there. I had some extras left over from another project, but you can find these at Hobby Lobby and they do go on sale for half off. So you can find those 12 by 12 mirrors and that's what you need if you wanna put a mirror inside of that little tray. Again, there's a tutorial for that tray as well. Also, you see that little wooden disc there. I'm gonna use it to put inside of this little lampshade that I'm showing you here. The bottom of that opening is really, really wide. So a candle holder will not close that off. So you need something to fit in there before you attach the candle holder. And that is what I chose to use. It looks like this and it comes in a packet of four. It's $2.99 and I am going to spray paint this up and bling it out and use it to attach it to the inside of that uh, lampshade which is what that little crystal thingy is so that we have a much sturdier base I spray painted mine and put some bling on it and I'll show you here in just a second I just wanted it to look like that when you turned it over because you can see through it I'm using that e6000 to attach that to the ball so I added a little bling strip just to cover any little imperfections in my work with the hot glue and then I'm going to take my mirror tiles and add them to the side. So the first thing we want to do is not necessarily just build up and up and up. What we want to do is start to put this together in pieces. So what I'm about to do is put this together. Now you definitely need your leveler because you want to make sure that things are built up straight. So using my epoxy which dries clear and sets in five minutes, I am going to start to build this up and kind of explain as I'm going along that I'm not going to do everything on camera, but just enough for you to get a sense. This is my next piece. You see, I've already built this part, which is already um, adhered, excuse me, and it's going to go eventually on here. But before I start to do that, I want to make sure that I build some of the other pieces so that when I attach them, I'm attaching them very, very level. So it takes a little bit of patience. So I'm gonna put that to the side. The first thing I'm gonna do is attach this one to the top of here, and I'm gonna make sure that this is level. Now, for attaching this, I'm gonna run my epoxy just inside here because that's where it's touching, and I wanna make sure that this adheres. And I'm gonna give this about 10 minutes to set. So I'm gonna mix this. Super easy to do if it's not clogged. Okay. Whatever that was, we're going to forget that happened. All right, and I'm just going to run this in here on the inside. I use this pan quite a bit. And again, I'm just running it on the inside for where it's going to be attached. You don't need a whole lot of this because it actually adheres pretty well. So I kind of use this a little bit at a time for each section. I don't mix a whole lot does have a strong smell so you may want a mask okay so now that I've gotten that oops missed that side now that I've gotten that in there I'm going to set this and the thing about this is it takes patience you want to make sure if you have to stand here and hold it that you hold it so that things don't fall. Make sure that it's leveled. Of course, mine is not, so I'm going to find that sweet spot. There we go. And you may have to stand and just hold it for a while until it adheres. It sets pretty quickly, but you just want to make sure that you keep things leveled. All right, that's the key. So I'm going to build a few more pieces. I won't show you the entire process, but I'll be back. 
Got this one drying. You see it's still leveled. I'm standing here and I'm watching it to make sure that nothing slides. That's going to be really, really important. While we're waiting on that, I'm going to go ahead and start to build from this second globe. This one is going to go on top of another candlestick that will be right here. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and build what is on top of this one. So again, you're just building in pieces so that when you attach, you can control whether or not it's actually level. So this is the next section that I'm going to make before I put the other candle holder on here and attach this entire thing. So again, it takes a lot of patience. You want to make sure you're standing and you're watching it. The epoxy is really, really great for this because it dries really fast and it sets like it sets very permanently. You don't want to use E6000 for this. I don't recommend it. All right. So when these pieces are finished, I'll come back and I'll show you how I built it up. All right, so while I'm waiting for this to dry, I just want to make a note about these candle holders. Sometimes, because they're only a dollar, they don't really sit flush. Sometimes they have this little lip in here that raises up, so you want to be mindful of that when you're trying to attach these. So play around with the candle holders. Make sure you find ones that sit flush or as flush as possible. Sometimes you do have to move it over just a teeny, teeny bit. You can't really tell for the naked eye, but I just wanted to point that out because as you're building, I don't want you to get discouraged. That's just the way these are made. Sometimes the lip is uneven. They're only a dollar, so you get what you pay for. All right, I'll be back. And we're gluing and we're building and we're gluing and we're building. But that's what this process is all about. It's about getting it perfectly. And this is why we do it in sections because we want to make sure that this thing is level. You don't want to build things and actually end up having it crooked. Here it is. It is finally all put together. Thank God, because that took a lot of time. And as you can see, it was nice and even. And now time for our shade. I am spraying that with that metallic spray paint that I showed you. It looks a little gray because I'm out there spraying at night, but it actually did come out in a nice metallic shade. Now, I did go over it with some glitter spray, but I didn't like it because it just wasn't sparkling enough. We still want this to really sparkle under the light. And even though we're using those clear crystals, you know, we want that little bit of sparkle. So I went ahead and Mod Podge it and used some glitter that I'll show you in just a second that I got from Michaels. It only took me a few minutes. I just used, I just did it in large sections and we were done. That glitter probably cost me about two bucks with the coupon, so it was totally worth it. And you'll see why I did that later. So I started with liquid nails to try to adhere a wooden plaque to the inside of that so that our candle holder has something to attach to. That glue didn't work, so use the epoxy for that, okay? Which is why you see the tiles here. I had to do it again. I blinged up some lights and used those removable adhesive strips to attach them to the inside of my base. Follow those arrows. My shade is upside down right now, but make sure the arrows are going the right way for the sake of weight. Now it's time to adhere the beads, and I'm just stringing those along to the top using... Um, um, the permanent bonding agent. I use Gorilla Glue for that just to attach those to the top of the lampshade. All right, we're making some progress. I finally got the top of this beaded the way that I want it. Now, it's going to be up to you how full you want this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tack these down here as well. You can do this with your Gorilla Glue, which I was using that Gorilla Glue earlier. This is almost like E6000. I just wanted something more permanent. I don't really like to use the hot glue gun for this because hot glue sometimes does tend to break and pull away. So I want this to be, when this is fully dry, you can kind of snag on it and it's really not going to move because it really is a permanent bond. Now, you might not have understood, again, why I glittered this, but now that this is beaded, you can see why I would, because again, that glitter, that sparkle, it's really going to shine through um, once this is done. So again, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to tack this. And then I'm probably going to start my next row because I do want this to be a little more full, either right on top of these or right in here. Now to do this full top, this took me about 60 strands of a total of uh, 40 bead lines. So 60 strands of 40 covered this top. So I will probably, if I'm coming in between, it'll be about 30 of the same because I still want to keep that length. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll be back. All right. So I'm just letting these fall where they're supposed to. I just wanted to come back and show you. What you don't want to do is manipulate them. You just want to let them fall exactly where they're supposed to fall and then you're going to tack it so i have this strand in my hand and i'm just kind of tracing that 
and it's just going to fall where it's supposed to fall. So when I tack it, I know that I'm going to tack it about right there. So you see that gapping in there and in there. Maybe for you, it doesn't matter. For me, it does because I want this to be just a little bit more full than it is because if it's gapping in here, it's going to also be gapping in there. See that gap? So I don't want those gaps. So that's why I'm going to come back up in here and I'm going to add those beads in between to make sure that we fill in those gaps. But I just wanted to show you, let things fall where they're supposed to. Don't try to straighten it out. Don't try to glue them too close. Just let them fall naturally and then go back and fill in your gaps if that's what you plan to do. Now, this is actually not too bad if you can see that. You know, it's got a nice... I don't know if you can really see that in the camera. It's falling pretty nicely. But again, it's not as full as I want it to be. So that's why I'm tacking these down and then I'm going to go back and add those. All right, I've said that enough. I'll be back. And are you ready for the big reveal? After all that work, we are finally ready to show it to you. I just wanted you to see the original inspiration one more time. And here is how ours came out. And I absolutely love it. And again, I left myself the option to put flowers inside of those little lampshades because there are some openings and I can wire some flowers in there if I want to. And if I don't, it is still fabulous. And not only does it make a good centerpiece for the ceremony and the reception tables, it'll also be great in my house whether I use it as a faux lamp or just use it as home decor in my living room that nobody can sit in. And hey, there's my tray. See it? See it? See it? That's the tray that I did in the other tutorial. There will be a flower arrangement in the bottom of there, but you can also get some different size tea light candle holders and put some tea light candles in there or some battery operated can candles with some uh, vases. It works, guys. It looks really amazing. It was worth the work. Things broke. I broke a couple of candle holders. I was working on two different designs, and I was hoping to show you both, but I broke one of the candle holders at the last minute. So I'll just have to come back and do an update, and you'll have to be bothered with me showing you this all over again. But you know what? I really like how it came out. I think it's pretty close to the original picture. So I have no complaints. I think that it's glamorous. I have no regrets in spending that $19, but I will show you the others that I'm making. There it is with the lights on. Again, I don't have a real place to really showcase this, but I hope you like this and I hope that you decide to make something like it. Remember, when you see that glamor, when you see that elegance in a magazine, your hands are just as anointed as mine. So I hope that you are inspired and encouraged to create your own glam. Remember, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Until next project, see you soon. Be blessed. Mm -hmm.